we are crawlers and welcome to the first episode of the I Can't Even podcast. We are joined by us members of Crawlers, but just so you get used to hearing us speaking, we'll give you our names. I'm Amy. I'm Holly. I'm Liv. I'm Harry. <laughs> I'm Harry. As, as as I'm reminded. Harry. I'm, I'm Harry. Reminding. No, his, Liv, you sound great today. His name is Amy. <laughs> <laughs> we can't, we've always wanted to do a podcast and this is going to be the first episode of getting to it. And we're going to start how we mean to go on. Yeah. So this <laughs> is a proverb book. O- little Oxford Dictionary <laughs> proverb a book, book right? It's, it's not just a proverb book. It's the proverb it's, book. It's the, the proverb, proverb book, book that we all live our life by, right? It's this true. comes everywhere with us as of recent. One of our engineers gave it to us as like a little good look. And he says, his name is Noah. He says, Crawlers, I wish you joy and success in each of your paths and hope I can share some of it with you. Love, Noah. Now, that's probably the most positive proverb in this book. The only <laughs> thing, I think it's just so worth noting, this book is is the definition of when you pre- put something in Google Translate <laughs> and then you translate it again in a different language and then tra- you translate it back to yeah, the British it's, it's a lot yeah. of like, and then it keeps going. It's until like it's Russian like proverbs, Chinese proverbs. And you read them, you're like, this doesn't make any fucking sense <laughs> in English. Like the fact that someone has made a profit off of the most unhinged book you will ever yeah. read i'm buying into it every so time let's kick off with the let's yeah. do it. so we always start our day with a proverb so i'm just always. gonna start this podcast oh, with a proverb some of them are awful I, I, we're going I feel random like you can't each time it. you need to like just yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, okay, okay i'm just gonna i'm just gonna random whatever your finger goes and then whatever my finger don't, goes don't on don't like censor one it. cannot love and be wise one oh, cannot be quite, wise and in love. That's quite cute. No, one cannot love and <laughs> be wise. <laughs> no. No, I didn't mean that in a dyslexic way, but I've heard that before. Not, not like, okay, yeah, I yeah, no, you like, Holly's I said that. <laughs> yeah, Holly's about that to steal that for a minute. Brain. Guys, the new Corolla song, I Cannot Be Wise and in so Love, you can't is coming be, out. You can't be in love and be wise. Oh my God, I need to find it. That was true. pretty much it. It okay. doesn't matter which it's way. Look it. So basically, like, if you're in love, you're stupid. Does it say where it's from? La- 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 <laughs> Latin <laughs> proverb, it said. It's a Latin okay. proverb. It's from Latin, my favourite <laughs> country. <laughs> <laughs> it's come all the way from Latin I've, I've lost where my finger was on it now. Well, do you guys think... I can't quite put my finger on it. Are there any lyrics? Are there any crawlers lyrics? Well... I coincide. think about this all the time. And number one, like let's let's think about my exes and how Okay, we can do that. <laughs> and that That's that, the next section of the <laughs> podcast. That is definitely true. Do you not think like when you're like in you love? You were you're definitely just not wise when you were in I, love. Absolutely. I was we've looking all, we've all made questionable choices. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like you could say that about any ex. You look back and they were like, that was not wise. Well, I was like looking yeah. through my Snapchat before because we were doing this like nostalgic like challenge and one of it was like, God, I'm so lucky. They made me breakfast today. I mean, wow. <laughs> the bar was so low. The bar is the, the bar floor. was so and that low. Is men. <laughs> men? Men do the minimum, and we're like, <laughs> yeah, it's, you make it too easy for us. It's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, what's it like being a woman in the music industry? <laughs> in fairness, I feel like I feel like you'd be quite good in a relationship. Oh, I feel like stop it. I feel like you wouldn't. Is that just from your do... experience with me on tour? Yeah. Sharing a room with me. Sharing a room with you. I feel like you you wouldn't do the bare minimum and just be like, yeah, this is fine. I feel like you would I go wouldn't like. wouldn't do up. the bare minimum. <laughs> no, no, like <laughs> Harry's great. below the bar. You'd be great. No. You wouldn't do shit. No, but no, no, I, I, I did not mean it like here. that. I meant like you would do more than the bare minimum. Like you would go above and beyond. Oh, that's what I meant. My favorite moment stop talking now. is um, we played this game <laughs> and it was like, who had the fittest S, X and locks the bag? X and locks the bag. Who the fittest X? And we all voted Harry because obviously we're gay and none of our exes were flops. <laughs> flops! This like so the proverb mean. said, you can't be... Wise so along and the lines love. of you can't be in love and be wise. It's true. I think Matty Healy said that recently he did, as well. Yeah. Fuck, did he actually? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh For my God, God's so he, he has this proverb book. <laughs> Matty <laughs> Healy, Healy has stole the proverb book. Where did he say it? He, it was in an interview. Saying low. Oh yeah, it was. He's, we've stolen Matty Healy's proverb book. Did he book. say it like he was quoting it or did he try and pull it off as if it was like no, his No, I think he was quoting someone who has said it before, like, someone like Bob Dylan. Matty Healy, if you want to be a guest on our podcast, the email is crawlers. Straight in there with the biggest guest. He actually fair turns enough. up tomorrow and he goes, can't be worse. Do you know what, though? Like, fair enough. Steak. Meryl Streep, if you want to come on as well, do you know? <laughs> Julian Anyone Anderson, Dawson. Name dropping. 
<laughs> while we're named Dorian. All right, guys. The next part of the podcast is going to be about things that have happened this week. Okay. Um, we're going to talk about what's happened in the week of our re- filming, whether it is a trend, a pol- political thing of the world, or whether it's just something funny that's happened in our personal lives. The first thing that came to mind was you getting up at half six the other day, as in PM. in the night. PM. <laughs> half six. What Jet lag in the was evening. Real. Well, uh, so that's like the most me move you've ever done. I know. Yeah. Like I've got. Just... Lives like what's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> that's like that's like early morning. Well, that's gorgeous. Fine. It's normal. What you're gorgeous. About? Absolute time to be alive. Six, I'm just yeah. having a lie in. I'm, just, I'm having a lie. I'm God, is the guy's knocking? <laughs> Sorry, go on. I'm knackered. I'm knackered. <laughs> well, we obviously, we'll kind of go into what we've been doing like the past month, but um, we'd come back from South Pie. And we, South Pie? South Pie. South Pie. South Pie, South Pie, Is that Pie going? South Pie, South Pie, South Pie, going? <laughs> South Pie, <laughs> uh, South Pie <laughs> Southwest, which is a festival in Texas. And we've all just come back with the plague. <laughs> the plague of no, Texas? No, you've come back with the plague. Hey, we've all, I think I'm still I a little bit jet lagged, to be honest. I'm Are really, you? I haven't really slept it off yet. Yeah, I keep well, saying to myself, tonight's the night, and it just never is. Don't say that. Well, I've got to say, the new Boy Genius album is coming out, and that's how excited I've been. I've been planning... Holly, you're not going to get them on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, Boy Genius. Feed me, Bridges, Julian Baker, and Lucy Dacus. If you're free, anytime, babe. Go with me. Our email is crawling. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I feel like everyone, I've not been like this hype because there's only a few bands and artists. Like, I feel like a little child when the album's coming out. Obviously, like, especially when you're, when you're, you are an artist yourself, you can't help but like cringe when it's like this whole roll up. But there's a few artists I, I don't care. Like, the 1975, if they're releasing an album, everyone's going to know about it. Phoebe Bridges, Boy Genius, Julian Baker, Lucy Charlie Jacobs. Charlie XCX. Charlie XCX. Mm. If they're getting an album, I'm becoming 14 year old again. I'm like, got all their things on notice. I'm like researching all their private gigs. I'm crying because we were in Austin and they did a surprise gig at the bag checkout where we'd literally been two hours before because our guitars got lost, but that's another story you'll hear in a bit. I don't want to talk about it. It was, to be it was traumatic. Liv, who was your band who you would go that feral over now? Um... Honestly, probably Beyonce. Go probably fairly. Beyonce. Why is she playing not, not in Yorkshire, by the way? She's playing in Yorkshire. Yeah. yeah. Where? Why is in, everyone in playing weird towns in the UK? Yeah, boy, she's, she's doing American. Halifax. She's doing like Halifax, cricket yeah. grounds. Like she's doing in cricket grounds. Fucking. Um, oh, where's she doing? In it's, Manchester. It's definitely like American promoters being like, they let's just know. choose a random spot in between these cities. It's like when. My chem did Warrington. My chemical romance playing Warrington but Town that's what I, I think their promoter was probably like, well, it's in between Liverpool and Manchester. Yeah. So let's just do it there. And, and they were like, and Leeds people and can get to there pretty easily. Like, what the fuck are you doing? I know. <laughs> well, they don't know what that's, because obviously America, as, as we've seen, is so big. They they just look at it and go, that. It's so easy. That is a beautiful destination, well, Warrington. Like stadiums though. I think that's why she's gone for it. Yeah. Like Foo Fighters mm. have, have played... Um, the old cricket ground in Manchester. Imagine seeing Beyonce and the Greg's old in like Halifax. <laughs> the old cricket ground's like iconic though. Old Trafford's like a big yeah. music What's place. The cap? Like, I don't oh know. God. Fucking loads. Couple thousand. Co- loads. <laughs> at least <laughs> ten. Loads. At least ten. At people. least ten. That's people. what the promoter said. Well, I, do, I don't want to. I don't want to give a number and it be wrong. Beyonce. So I'm gonna go safe with a couple thousand. A couple Beyonce thousand. is like the thousand. one. <laughs> I reckon it's like it's be way more sixty thousand. Harry, I think who's your band? What that like? If they brought something out now, mm. yeah, you got it too. But they're they're currently bringing stuff out. They brought out a single, which is a bit terrible. You really selling it to us here, Harry? <laughs> but if they bring out an album, I'm sure it'd be sick. Yeah, it's gonna be good. I think it's funny just getting back to Beyonce because she's like the one artist, right? Any award, like she ceremony, she's like the one artist that everyone goes to. She's like the one artist, right? Any award, like ceremony, anything, like every artist is like, but I wanted it to go to Beyonce. I, she deserves I, it. My she does? favorite. Beyonce award moment was when Adele split her. Was I don't know if it was a Grammy or I think gra- it was a it Grammy. Was a Grammy yeah. She split amazing. a Grammy in half and gave. Yeah, but gave I it swear to that was the year that she had six or something. So yeah, fair enough. <laughs> it was like, when Adele won like every Brit, every Grammy, like everything under as the she sun. Should? Yeah, it wasn't it around the time where like Beyonce had just released Lemonade and she was like, "It's been so inspirational to like my work." Oh wow, it's I fucking cracking album, isn't it? Lemonade. It was a really good album. Um, I guess she deserves it. Times a week. So that's what I've been doing. I've been fangirling, reading, going back to my 14 year old days of becoming a thingy, but that's fine. I've not really had like, I've not really been paying a lot of attention to the world, which is terrible of me, (laughs) but I have had like a funny thing happen in in my little universe. So apparently um, my sister's cat is like famous. 
what? know. And she didn't know this. What? Yeah. What? So she's famous. What? Like I say famous, but like people are like selling. Beyonce. Beyonce? Can, we, can we commission the cat? People <laughs> probably soups out of a job. We're gonna love the oh, cat as an ascot. People are like selling pictures of my sister's cat as like like wallpapers. How 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 is this happening? Where did so they is, it, is it like when you buy like a photo frame and there's like a picture inside? Are you sure? It's it? not, no, I don't think it's like are that. Are you sure it's not just a cat? No, <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a black 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 Florence. <laughs> it's a black and white cat. That is Florence. That is Florence. <laughs> they get a picture of Jesse from Postman Park. No, going, fucking hell, it's Florence. <laughs> Postman Pat. No, do you know what I think it is? I think it's something like my sister's like been uploading these photos to like Reddit or something and like like the pet thing. It will have been something like that. I didn't I didn't like ask her properly like what what on earth has gone on for these like series of events to happen. But she was like, I have now learnt that people are like downloading these pictures of Florence and oh. using them as like their widgets, widgets? on their phone. <laughs> well, the thing is, because she's had someone like email her before and be like can I draw your cat? Can I have more pictures of your cat so I can draw your cat? And she's been like, Whoa. this is a bit weird. This is really Surely weird. someone could just type in black and white cat and probably <laughs> get the same <laughs> thing. Are you saying- to be your cat Are you saying my baby no, girl your, your is not gorgeous? No, Florence is very, very beautiful. But what I'm saying is- I know, I don't know why they were like specifically reaching out. Like Ash was like, this is getting a bit weird. Like, yeah. I don't know who these men are messaging me, men, asking for pictures of Florence. Already, it's not looking good for Florence right now. It, what's still happened? haven't thought anything. Has nothing happened in I your life? I went to an Airbnb on the weekend. Was, <laughs> it, was it in London? <laughs> no, it was in uh, Cheshire. Cheshire? Oh, well, I think it was che Or Chester, maybe, but it was cheap. Oh, that's so, nice. Did yeah. you just get absolutely drunk? Like? Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. But we also did an Airbnb when we recorded the uh, mixtape as well, or the demos for the mixtape. We tape, did. Which is a nice little segue. In wheels. It is. It is. I, I've got, yeah, the next conversation. Well, guys, something really special did happen to us this week, right? I don't know. Our first single came out. Oh, yeah. The mixtape. <laughs> did, did it? Tickets. So obviously, like all the artists that I'm into, they have really kind of strong campaigns. I've always like been an artist that kind of looks at the whole storyboard of everything. We've always kind of gone really deep into it. And when we kind of recorded that time of year and decided that was going to be the next single, we wanted the whole thing to be this thing. So we were like, let's hibernate. We wanted the whole thing to we be the thing. We wanted the thing to be the thing so we, we could do the thing and things. And things. We wanted things. to hibernate because obviously things. the whole song is about uh, seasonal depression. It's about recoming in spring. Um, it's, you know, that time of year always. But obviously we hibernated for like three months, which was great. And then I have recently started posting again. I was like, oh, wow, posts have been a little bit, little bit slow on the thingy. And I had one comment. I just completely forgot what people are like. And they went, yeah, I have object in permanence and forgot you guys existed, but it's good for you to be back. I was like, oh, fair enough. Oh, we forgot we existed too. We did. We like- I can't believe it was three months that we were three inactive. Three months we were inactive. It yeah. was three months. months. On TikTok it was. It was. I was gonna say across socials, it was not three months. TikTok was. TikTok, we went off for from the fifteenth of January, yeah. and we didn't come back till what? Yeah, like really. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. One thing we have been doing this week is going to South by Southwest Festival, which is an extremely notorious festival in Austin, Texas. It is known to be kind of one of the first festivals that upcoming artists play. It's a very industry led festival, but loads of British bands and loads of European bands, as well as American bands, go over to kind of catch the eye of promoters and agents. And it's kind of a big rite of passage. And this year was our first time doing that. We were quite lucky because we've been to America. Um, twice now well um three times we've once uh, been for writing but um we went played Lollapalooza and we also did our first US tour um but yeah so South by Southwest guys how are we feeling after coming back from Austin tired still do you know what now that the jet lag has like left my body do you I know what it was a rocky start a rocky 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 <laughs> start yeah, the, the stage manager on our first set was wasted yeah well this is like, the thing actually wasted because obviously with South By, no one really knew we were doing it because obviously we were in hibernation. We were like, okay, it's kind of an industry-led festival. We'll just do a little prompt so people know we're playing it. 
Um, so obviously this is all new news to you. Normally we'd make a joke on our stories or Twitter and we'd shit post about it. This, we were raw dogging it, verb. We were raw dogging it the whole way verb. through. And verb. everything went wrong for this festival that it could have. I, I just took that. I feel lost like the guitars like, at first. <laughs> the thing yeah. is though, I feel like regardless of what it is, if something doesn't go wrong, then it's not Fun. a crawl as... If if Thing something true. hasn't gone wrong, we're waiting for things to go wrong. And we're like on the first always thing, has to the go first wrong. thing that went wrong was that the flight from Manchester to London was delayed by like two hours. Yeah, and then the flight to London to Texas was also delayed because of missing bags. Now we have Apple tags in like everything. So Big we brains do it. Put Apple tags in your stuff because otherwise, you know. So we were looking at like our things. Was like, oh, it's good that the flight's delayed. So at least we'll get there and everything will be there because that's the problem. The problem is the missing bags, which but they at are first, fixing. Like the the flight from London to Texas wasn't delayed. So we were like, we've got ten minutes. To we had ten plane. minutes to get on and off the flight, which wasn't going to happen. So we thought it was going to flight. We didn't miss a flight, but yeah. So we sat on this flight to Texas. And then we see that our guitars aren't on the flight. So we say to like one of the BA guys, like, oh, the flight's delayed because of these missing bags. Like we, we can, can see they're not we here. We can <laughs> see like they're in terminal five, I think it was. And then they were like, oh yeah, we can't do anything about that. So we were just like <laughs> literally, literally left Heathrow seeing our guitars not come with us. And I was like, this is the a fact fucking that the disaster. plane like kept delaying though. They were like, oh, we'll leave in like 10 minutes. Like we're getting the bags now. And then 10 minutes would pass and it'd be like, yeah, we're still waiting for like another 10 minutes. Like, yeah. we can see that they are our bags that are delaying people. Like we're telling <laughs> yeah. you, yeah. we are the problem And then the, ba the base the came like two days after we landed. And then the guitars came the day after that. So for the first show, I didn't have any of my own stuff, which was fine. Like I can we made friends and yeah. We, we, we ended up lending the guys that we met on the plane. <laughs> they were their <laughs> guitars. Yeah, What's lemonade, the called? Lemonade, lemonade shoelace. shoelace. Lemonade I think shoelace. my favorite part of the whole thing was obviously we've been away before and it's very rare that other people have musical equipment with them. It's very rare you get on a flight with another musician. So obviously you've got these Pele cases, which are big, strong, sturdy cases with equipment in, with like thingy stuff. We also have this thing called a Scotty Dixon, which I thought we just called it a name, but apparently it's the fucking mm, brand of the, the actual case. brand Holly of the case. thought it was named after the, its previous a owner. I did. It was called <laughs> yeah. Scott. Yeah, that was it. In we, the Lathams. Yeah, we borrowed one of the bands. Scotty band Dixon's called the well nice letting us. I was like, God, Scotty Dixon, what a lovely guy. Everyone's <laughs> what a legend <laughs> Scotty Dixon is. Everyone else talking Not about his name. Dixon. Also, I feel like this is only fun. I feel like this joke is only funny to people who know what Scotty Dixon's are. Well, obviously, so it's like a Industry big guitar insights. case. Um, but it's very, these are all things that you do not see on a flight, right? But obviously, we were going to Austin, Texas while everybody was going everyone to South Everyone was also going to Austin, Texas. So we were stood by this like conveyor belt and it was like, oh, it's our Pelly case. Oh no, it's it's not our Pelly case, but it just kept happening. It was like Pelly, yeah. Pelly, Pelly, guitars, everyone, guitars, guitars. Like half the people on that flight were bands like going to play South I know. Which I'm is quite cool to be fair. I'm supposed to be the one like edgy person reminiscing my life, like supposed to be like, at the plane but now everybody was that that thing. flight made me so nervous because everyone was a musician and we are very annoying on and flights. i was like we're, we are like the loudest people anywhere we go i, two, I two would hate us time every time it's offered to us just yeah. so we can sleep on the oh flight. yeah on the flight like me and mark our tour manager just get <laughs> drunk every time because i cannot sleep on flights but if i'm drunk i will sleep on a flight Why do you know what like if i so if i wasn't like on that wavelength with you of like being like giddy like ready to go i would hate us I yeah. would be like, oh, yeah. shut up. Yeah. Yeah. We have got too. zoomies like an actual cat. But the thing is, like, once we've had our zoomies, we do like pass out. Yeah. <laughs> so at South by, we obviously, Harry, you were touching on the, the stage manager incident. I, I didn't know where you were going with that. Sentence, Harry, you were touching you the were stage touching manager. Harry, you <laughs> were. <laughs> Harry, you the, were the touching. The stage manager was so drunk. Like, and he kept, <laughs> he kept reminding us literally every minute. He was like, you've got 10 minutes left. You've got nine minutes left. You've got eight he minutes left. He was such We're like, we, un we understand, like. No, so I'm sorry. He really pissed me off because he was like, yeah, um, we're going to cut your set so this band can finish theirs. And we were like, right, but you've told us that we got a 50 minute. Yeah, only the headliners get 50 minutes. We are the headliners. You are literally like, talking no, to the headliners. your set's getting cut. And I was like, it's like you, right. you are looking the headliner in the eyes right now <laughs> and you are telling me Excuse you're cutting. 
Excuse you look in the me. You are looking the headline in the eye. No, I'm not being funny. It's misogynistic. No, it was, I thought don't it was misogynistic. Do there was don't another do band it. playing whilst he was telling us that our set was going to get cut because they were oh, like... They were yeah, like late what getting he said on. To me like, was, why are you cutting our set? He said to me, <laughs> to my face, he was like, I'm letting these guys run over by 10 minutes, so I'm going to cut your set. And I was like, I don't think you why are. Why don't you just tell him to get off the stage <laughs> when they're supposed to get Do off the stage? Do you know what, though? If it hadn't been for Abby, we would not have got that, yeah, that time legend. back. Yeah, yeah, she's absolutely I mean, he was one. just drunk and like... He trying, kept to, his drinks. trying to do his yeah, job. Yeah, he was bribing us with drinks. Badly. I was like, mate, this is not going to work. I don't want to think about his bar tab after. Anyway, he ended up getting sacked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that was not just by our hand, though. Like, no. loads of other bands had complained. Yeah. I mean, it was. It must have been a rough day for him to wake to up. To get that wasted. To, to, yeah, yeah. That hangover plus oh, God. The, yeah, yeah, I mean, bar tab. Up with a three grand bar tab, no job, and a hangover. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> poor guy. The hangover and, part and, three. and he's working South by, which is like the most chaotic thing ever. And he's just woken up, been like, "Oh, you've been sacked." So there was that was day one. That was day that, one. That was day one. I think what was so funny, there's a few things about like traveling away to like America. And like one, one thing is that we as a band are extremely hard to cater for. Because obviously uh, me, I'm vegan, Mark's vegan and lives celiac and lactose intolerant. So we're a fucking nightmare. <laughs> and then going to a place like Texas, they're like, we've got barbecue <laughs> and barbecue? is that meant to be a texas accent i don't know barbecue you we've sound got, like a sports like we've got <laughs> barbecue and what else do we have barbecue <laughs> and wheat yeah and we bread. have we have breaded and and buttered this meat <laughs> for you crawlers. specifically crawlers. crawlers i heard you were coming i've bred and buttered your meat <laughs> really bad but do you know what though like now that the jet lag has left my body like i i can appreciate how much i actually enjoyed it oh it so yeah, much we did fun have a lot of like spare time to just chill and enjoy austin it was not like when I'm you're on to tour of what like, else went time. wrong there was other stuff we couldn't sure. get into two hotels that we'd booked that oh, was a problem we had gunshots one night oh my well. god yeah there was yeah, a shooting that, right outside yeah. that was that was, awful. That was oh, terrifying that was to be honest because like we were we were like in bed weren't we we were all like settling down and then we just heard like pew pew outside yeah. like, just like that it was a laser gun <laughs> i mean i don't want to say fortunately we don't get that in the uk because obviously it's <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. but it's, it's like, not as common it just doesn't happen here but yeah, like it's really in scary. in texas you know we, we were speaking to people and like, oh yeah that happens like all the time and it's just like you can open world. carry in texas can't you? yeah it's, yeah. Crazy. it's terrifying the number of bars that like we would walk past or walk into and it would be like no guns and you had to like leave your guns you by the door do you remember that, that bar was... when we were looking for because we were going to go watch brooke and we got in the queue for the bar next door <gasps> and they had like stab proof vests on mm. and they literally like patted down like every That's, sleeve. It's every terrifying. Leg. I don't That's get scary. how that doesn't knock people sick. <laughs> oh, I know, it's so sick. scary. Like obviously because we've traveled quite a few places now and it's weird how like far away culturally we are from America compared to like Europe. Definitely. Like Europe, even though it is very different, like I think there's a little bit more of a cohesion there. When you go to America, I do feel like a little baby experiencing the world yeah. for the first time. It's so time. big mm. as well, like it's every huge. place in america is so different like you meet americans they're like oh my god i'm literally so far away from home <laughs> it's like you're in the same country and then you look where they're from and you're like whoa you are like just they've about driven like 16 hours yeah. yeah like we were speaking to people and they're like oh i i don't really i'm not from here and it's like but you're american i don't know you just assume they're all kind of yeah. you know and then you're just like oh no i'm ignorant you are literally a four-hour flight away like, yeah what the fuck? that is fucking crazy are you guys mm. ready for the next stage of our podcast I'm um, ready for the next stage. Okay, so the next stage is we're gonna, obviously with um, that time of year being out about and we're kind of reflecting a lot on our youth and our long thing. I thought what would be fun is sharing some embarrassing stories from our childhood to, you know, the listeners and... Okay, right, so my mum sent me an embarrassing story. So I've asked like our family members to send us something so we can kind of laugh and just be like, this is stupid because I feel like no one knows you better than the people who watched you grow up. So I've not heard this. I'm really nervous. Okay, here we go. Shout out to my mom. Funny stories about Holly Minto. <laughs> it's all a blur. There are so many stories about Holly Minto as a young person. She very much was on the go from morning till night. Luckily for me, she slept really well from 
almost bringing her home from hospital. So that was a relief because she really didn't stop. Well, so yourself I can out. tell you about the time she was eight months old. Um, I left her on the floor in the living room while I took my cup out to the kitchen. I must have been gone 20 seconds. And I came back and she managed to pull herself up on a box that I was using to store all the nappy stuff in and had got the pseudoquim and was covering her face in it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, she did that more than once. (laughs) Yeah. She did that more than once. You know, I've, this I've was a regular occurrence. Addicted to pseudocreme. So I've got uh, my pseudocreme. Like, it's really funny. Um, my pseudocreme here. <laughs> I had really Holly, you know full well Holly's going <laughs> to go home tonight and be like, so I'm in my pseudocreme. I'm in my pseudocreme era. Well, I actually had really, really, really bad eczema my whole like childhood probably until I, I still get it quite bad now especially in like areas i get sweaty and pseudocreme is the only thing that would sort me and obviously it's right. quite it's quite distressing because my whole thighs and my whole arms would just be covered in eczema and pseudocreme but obviously my mum wanted me to use it so not only did i smear it all over my body at eight months old but um i used to call it my barbie cream because otherwise i didn't want to touch it it had to be interesting to me i wasn't bothered right and then a year later i was like mummy it's not my barbie cream anymore i hate barbie i like sonic the hedgehog <laughs> So it's not your Sonic the Hedgehog cream. So it was Sonic cream. And um, yeah, so that slathered me up. I feel like your mum could like read bedtime stories. That was really soothing. She's got a very soothing voice. You can tell she's a therapist. I was going to say, she has got the right voice for therapy. She does. There are some people who like you hear them talk and you're like, you would be the worst therapist. Imagine me as a therapist with my voice. Just crack off. You'd be like, get on with it. Have you you tried having a cup of tea in a bath? (laughs) Bath. A bath. Bath for. You're like, just gonna have to crack on, aren't you? I, got, I honestly would be the worst therapist in the world. I do have like a good balance between like going to you two about my problems. Like, if I do just need someone to say crack on, I'll just go to Amy and Amy, like, you're all right then. Just crack on, and that. The number of times I've gone to Amy, like, in tears, being like, I just don't know what to do. And you'll be like, fucking do it. Like, <laughs> what's gonna happen either way? Like, just get on with it. I am, I must say, I am very good at giving advice. You are. You very, know direct you are. Advice, very direct advice. Very direct advice. But, no, but just gonna, just very gonna like, have to crack on. <laughs> my, my, my best like one. <laughs> my, my best no, but advice. like you're right. Sometimes you do need someone to just be blunt with you and be like, "Why are you getting so in yeah. your head about this?" I I am very good at getting in my own head. And yeah. The number of times you'll be like, "Shut up." I feel like Stop we do have family. like different people we go to. Like, <laughs> like you said, like if you want like nurturing, like maybe you, like you or Jess. Liv or Jess. Definitely. Jess and then for nurturing. like if you want just like a slap in the face, like you or Mark. come to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Obviously, Jess being our touring photographer and Mark being our tour manager, so they're kind of in our little family. Um, Liv, are you ready to expose yourself? I don't know if I am. So this is my sister. I'm nervous. I'm. You're nervous. I was nervous for mine. Right. Getting a bit shaky. Um. Okay. I do remember when you were young. Like ever since I can remember, you've always just been more of an old soul. Um, your obsession with Elton John and that Crocodile Rock song that we had to play on repeat back to back over and over again just so much that I can't even bear to listen to it now without it sending a shiver down my spine (laughs) (laughs) it finished and we had to rewind and play it again and again this girl was shocked when I came out as gay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just throw that like, in there. I was like, Elton John. I was like, oh, you're gay? The signs were all there. Okay. And again, and you just wouldn't get bored of it. You'd be dancing around. This would have been like when you were two, something like that, dancing around with your little uh, pigtails on, with your big sunglasses um, and your pink glittery Barbie wellies that you never took off. I think I've got pictures Where of you somewhere. I would. You little pink glittery Barbie wellies <laughs> um, with every outfit, um, which you loved. Uh, oh, you were funny. Um, and one summer, really it must have been when you were like, you were much older by this point, but it always tickles me, is when, oh God, how old would you have been? It must have been about 12, something like that, maybe. Um, I can't remember, but you were much older. Anyway, it was summer and we were having a barbecue. And I had been sunbathing, as per. And I'd gone into the kitchen to get myself a glass of wine. 
and you came sauntering in, dead fancy, drinking orange juice out of a champagne glass. And he just looked at me while opening the fridge and just went, top up. (laughs) (laughs) Liv, that is the most you thing I've ever... Right, for context, right, I don't... Whenever Liv, we always have the second... You know, babe, do you want to top up, yeah? Liv... No, she Liv does it all the time. Liv is obsessed with Prosecco and whenever we're like having wine or any champagne or anything like that, Liv, She'll do like, the rounds. Come round you and get get her three fingers, like hold your shoulder and go, you want a pop This is no, what it is. She'll so take it in turns, like each person. Like, I can't believe you were doing that since 12 years old. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's, it's You so are an old funny. soul. It's like this. Do you want a tap up? What's your poison? What's your poison? What's your poison? Orange juice. I cracked up laughing and you were dead serious. You were like, What's funny? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how old you were, like 12 year olds, someone turned in with your, glass, your champagne glass of orange juice. Top up. <laughs> it's so funny. Liv, that is so What's you. your poison? Well, guys, top up. What's your poison? You know orange what? juice. Orange juice, apple You are juice. such a Warrington dad. It's unbelievable. You are. Liv's alter soul. ego is such a northern dad. A northern dad. <laughs> Do you know what, guys? I must have been a northern dad in my past life. I've got to say, and this is something that like, I, I guess you'll relate to, but like, I've never had like a younger child in my life. And now that I'm seeing like a younger child, I just realize it's dead weird how we all had like, we were harboring those personalities when we were so young. You were 12 and still asking. Top up. Top up. Top up, up, babe. Top up. What's your poison? What's your poison? Watch your pies and bees. That's hilarious. Oh my That's God. I must have been a drag queen in my past life or something. <laughs> what the hell? You were literally a northern dad. Like, I actually mm. <laughs> Ridiculous. It's and so here's one to top it off, go right? On, Amy, give us your. I so I wasn't that young, right? Bear in mind, I've I've definitely told you guys this story, but it just gets funny every time. So amazing, not grace. amazing grace, no. So it, I think I was like fourteen, right? right? And it me and my family were going on holiday with my cousin Maisie, who's just the best. I've seen her nipples more than mine. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> and, <Same>. um, <laughs> And um, we're going through security. I had um, my first pair of Doc Martens on. They were just like the classic original like low boot ones. And um, the security guard was like basically telling me that I needed to take my Doc Martens off. But she was Spanish and she couldn't speak English and I can't speak Spanish. So there was a bit of like a bit of a barrier. Right. So... I can't even tell you how you've, bad you've it You've got to finish this story. And, it's amazing. Um, so she points at my shoes and she's like, oh, like Dot Martins, we're the same. And then she like puts her arms out like this as in to signal me to like be patted down. So I'm just going to say that bit again. She points at my shoes and says, oh, I'm wearing Dot Martins as well. So what I did was give her a look. <laughs> to the security at Alicante Airport because I thought she was giving me a hug because we had the same shoes on and then I realised that she wasn't trying to give me a hug (laughs) (laughs) I just had to kind of like peel myself I was like and obviously Maisie, my cousin, was like, wait, <laughs> all this. And then this woman just, it was the quickest part of her life. I swear to God, it was, it, it was literally like, okay, you're fine. <laughs> and then I was like, oh my God. And I was, like I said, I was 14, but that is probably the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to me. I actually have shivers down my spine. It's so something. I think like <laughs> that's I one way to get out of being patted down at an airport is to just, <laughs> just give them a, <laughs> give them a hug. I might do that next time. To be fair, if I was a bit older, like if I was like past eighteen, I feel like they probably could have took me like aside. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Been like, what are you doing? Why I, are you doing this? Is that? a very serious <laughs> situation, and you're like, I just thought we were Doc Martin buddies. I did. Thought we were friendos. Awful. You betrayed me. <laughs> Well, I want to thank all of our listeners for tuning in today. We have been Crawlers and this is the I Can't Even podcast. And if you like this, make sure to check us out. Check out our new song, That Time of Year Always. And thanks for watching our first podcast and listening. See you next time.